Hello there. So in this video, I want to do something really, really weird. Um, I'm basically sorting out my parents' garage a little bit, trying to sort out this absolute mess. They moved in here a couple of years ago and uh, they just kind of dumped all the boxes in. And I've been trying to sort of clear a little bit of a gangway so that you can actually use the garage or walk in it. The reason I'm trying to do that is basically because I need this garage for something, for a secret project that I can't tell you about at the moment. Sounds more mysterious than it is, or will be revealed at some point. But anyway, I've been sorting through boxes and I found a few things of interest while I've been doing this. So let me just show you a few of them because I thought they would be quite interesting to take a look. Uh, let's put this down here. So the first thing, some quite exciting computery things here. We've got a, a graphics card, Righteous 3D by Orchid, or is it the Orchid? Yeah, the Orchid Righteous 3D. Wow, look at the quality of the graphics on that. This is your mech on software. This is your mech. Oh, I see. Software versus Righteous 3D. I see. Um, yeah, don't really look much different, do they? Anyway, the most interesting thing here is this Creative Lab Sound Blaster R32, which is in here, boxed, um, with all the manuals and all the discs and things. And do you know what? I found one of these that's sold in Spain for like 250 quid. So I think we're gonna stick this on eBay, actually, and try and get rid of it. Um, this was a fantastic sound card at the time. It was kind of good for MIDI files and things. Um, you, there are some great videos. In fact, I might leave a link to one down below so you can check it out for yourself. But it's this wave effect or wav effects synthesis thing where you could basically do MIDI files that sounded well they still sounded rubbish let's be honest but they sounded a bit less rubbish from an all 32 so we'll stick that on uh, on ebay i think also a uh, pilot joysticky thing there all this kind of interesting stuff but also in this box over here what have we got got things that really need to go in the bin actually because we've kept things like this thing for a bubble jet printer which we haven't even got anymore a TIAC CD ROM drive box for a 32 speed drive got a 60 quid look at that it, that's not in the box either but I think the most interesting thing in here is this Sidewinder Microsoft Force Feedback Joystick. This was a fantastic bit of kit, and to be honest, it still is a fantastic bit of kit. There really aren't many joysticks that feel as solid or as good as this. Um, they made a follow-up to this, like the Sidewinder 2, cheap by comparison, and felt cheap, to be honest, as well. Now, the sad thing is, you know, people look at this, oh, wow, look, the box is in immaculate condition. Yeah, we took the actual joystick to the dump, like, 20 years ago so uh, it's an empty box uh, we've got well that's broken we've got um, a 56k internal is that pci modem it looks like oh yeah it's there. Um, yeah this is a great modem first well second foray onto the internet actually oh, third for my dad i think. I think he did it on his amiga um yeah that's not in there either uh, but this is quite interesting look AMD K63 450 megahertz processor from Software Warehouse, which is a now defunct company. 127 quid, unbelievable. Um, this was my second ever computer processor, I think. Oh no, my third ever actually, because I did have, in fact, I'm looking at this, it wasn't even mine, was it? Mine was a K62 350. This is my dad's one when he one-upped me. Anyway, cut a long story short, that's not in there either that's an empty box as well um there's really just nothing here of any well it's kind of it's memories without any of the uh, actual substance to go along with it which is a little bit of a, a shame um let's go and have a quick look in the conservatory and as we move into the conservatoire garnier if we have a look down here ah uh, we've got a pile of things that I found that I, I didn't even realize I had. Of course, once I found them, I recognized them all, remembered where they came from, but I can't believe that these were just stored in my parents' garage. So a couple of ethernet cables, that's not interesting, is it? But you know, you always need some brand new ethernet cables. These came in an old router box, so I'll keep those. But I've got some fantastic things here. Psycho Pinball, uh, which is for the Sega Mega Drive. It was a really addictive pinball game, actually. 
essentially worthless now. Well, actually, that's a little bit of a lie. Everything sort of retro gamey has got a little bit of value. So I think this is probably worth about seven quid, not really worth selling. We've also got a um, light magnifier for a Game Boy, um, which I've never really used. I became obsessed with getting a Game Boy for um, a birthday present once and got all the stuff for it, the magnifier, and there's a spook memory card thing here as well, 1999, blimey. Um, and got all the stuff, became obsessed with it, but then never really actually played it very much. Um, we've also got another Game Boy game here, Star Trek Beyond the Nexus. I literally never played the game, I don't think. I think it's brand new. I'm su be surprised if it's ever actually even been in my Game Boy. Pretty worthless as well, probably worth about eight quid. Then we get onto the things that have a little tiny bit more value and a little bit more interesting. So I've got Diddy Kong Racing here for the N64. And I mean, that's pretty, I wouldn't say it's immaculate, but I, it's remarkably in superb condition. And I think this is worth about, probably about £25. Same with um, GoldenEye. Everybody had GoldenEye. But of course, most kids threw their boxes away. And for some reason, I kind of kept them in my wardrobe. I think I became a bit obsessed with like piling up the boxes. So I've still got them and most of them have survived. Um, so that's probably worth a little bit as well. MRC Racing, which is kind of not really worth much at all. Uh, this looked amazing when I used to play it as a kid. I thought it was a fantastically detailed racing game. And um, actually, the cartridges aren't in these boxes. They're actually uh, in my place in a, in a wardrobe. Oh, I store a lot of things in wardrobes, as you can tell. Um, I tried to load my N64 or play it the other day. I plugged it into my massive computer uh, television screen and uh yeah i was really underwhelmed with the graphics i thought this will be a fantastic trip down memory lane i'll enjoy every minute of the nostalgia and actually the low resolution and the sort of yeah just the poor quality of image and the not so much the gameplay you kind of the images are so bad that you just can't really enjoy the gameplay so yeah, but anyway, I enjoyed this as a kid, but it's essentially worthless. I think it's worth like five pounds uh, now. I'll just look after these by balancing them in a real strong and secure tower of games there. Um, Mega Drive, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'm sure everybody had this, but again, you know, I don't think it's worth that much. Maybe another eight quid or something, but it's pretty immaculate, as you can see. But the most interesting thing here is this game, um, which is box. It's a little bit squashed at the side there. I don't know how problematic that is for collectors, but it turns out that this one that's the most damaged of all of these is the most valuable. People have sold this on eBay for like 80 quid. Or, no, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. 60 quid. I don't know whether this game was rare or really why it's popular now. I have to say, I, I did actually complete this game as a kid. It was kind of like a sort of adventure game, sort of a little bit role play like um i suppose like a rubbish version of final fantasy i think that's probably why i tried to complete it because i thought it was my equivalent of final fantasy which is hilarious when you actually look at the uh, how the characters looked it's nothing like final fantasy but i completed it loved the music in it and it was a really kind of weird game i'm not sure why i bought it at all and uh, yeah, it's worth something. So I might actually flog this, might sell it, might stick it on eBay, see what I can get for it. Um, yeah, oh, she's uh, attractive. Um, actually, that's a bit inappropriate, isn't it, for, a, for like a kid's game? Why is there a woman in a bra on the side of this? I don't know, the day's gone by, things have changed so much, haven't they? You'd never get away with that now. Now you just get that in music videos where people actually having intercourse in music videos don't you never mind so that's just a look at a few things that i found hope you find that a little bit interesting do you want to, if you want to buy any of this let me know i could uh, sell it to you possibly i don't know don't know what i'm talking about anyway thank you for watching thank you to my loyal patreons who are scrolling down the screen now especially george foot magnanimous meg jim mccaig and jennifer jones who are very generous patreons i shall see you next time for another video